Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Cafe Conversations. Uh, we're very excited to have everybody with us here today. I'm Elizabeth Vaughn, the Associate Senior Director of Philanthropy in the College, and I have with us today Whitley Patterson and Sierra Tishnell. Um, both are, well, I guess Sierra is still a student in the college, and Whitley, just what, a week ago now, not even a full week, is a grad of the college. So she just finished up um, and graduated over the weekend. So we do, before we jump in, I will say we have all of our uh, per, uh, guests on mute, and we do that just so that you guys can hear the panelists a little bit better. Um, and so if you do have questions as we're moving along here, feel free to throw those in the chat pod and we will uh, ask Whitley and Sierra to address some of those. But we will go ahead and dive in. Um, Whitley and Sierra, do you guys want to kind of introduce yourselves, talk about where you're from, maybe what, how you got to UK, what your majors are? What Sierra, tell us what year in school you are. There we go. Okay, hi. My name is Whitley Patterson. Um, I'm from McLean County here in Kentucky. It's so small that I'd say my town name, but you probably wouldn't know it. Um, I recently graduated with a dual degree in Ag Economics and Marketing. Awesome. Hi, um, I'm from Western Maryland, and I am an animal science major on the pre-vet track. And I am going to begin my senior year in the fall. That's great. So you guys, you know, probably have had pretty similar experiences given that you're only a year apart in school. But what drew you to UK? What drew you to, you know, College of Agriculture, Food and Environment in particular? So, um, Growing up on a farm in Kentucky, I was born and bred, go Big Blue, Big Blue Nation. So um, I've always loved cheering on the Cats basketball team. And, you know, being from a farm, I knew I wanted to pursue um, an education in ag. And UK seemed like a really great place for me to do that. It was also an opportunity for me to kind of get out of my comfort zone. I graduated with 120 people, going to 30,000 people is a it was a big difference, so it was a good way for me to um, get some new opportunities and meet a lot of people. I guess I have a similar experience, except um, I had a few options whenever picking which college to go to, and I kind of narrowed it down between the University of Maryland and here, and I came here for a visit and I absolutely fell in love with the area, with Lexington, with the college, and it just felt like home. And I knew that I had to come here, even though it is like six hours away from home, it was definitely going to be worth it. And I, I just, I'm so happy that I made that choice. Awesome. So Sierra, we'll start this one with you. Um, what's been your favorite thing so far about being a student in the College of Ag? Um, definitely, definitely the community. Um, whenever I came to Kentucky, I knew absolutely nobody. I moved here by myself. I no, nobody from my high school went here or even from my county. So it was um, a big change from going to knowing pretty much everyone in my small town to knowing absolutely nobody. And within the College of Ag, I found a second family. I mean, everyone is so willing to help you, to lend a hand, to make you feel like you're a part and that you're supposed to be there. And I have come to know a lot of people within the college. And it's just one big community where um, everyone is just there to be a part and make the college the best that it can be. And I absolutely love it. Awesome. Whitley, how about you? Um, I think that um, 
my answer would be very similar. I met some really great friends. All of my professors were super, super helpful, approachable. I could go to them and ask them questions for class. I can send them emails. They're very responsive. And also, I feel like the College of Ag has a really great scholarship program. And I know that I benefited from that in my time at UK. Yeah, that's awesome. So you guys both kind of talked about, you know, the community and the faculty and student support. I know you've both been really involved in student organizations. Tell us about some of the student organizations you're involved with, how you got involved, what drew you to those? Um, so I am involved in quite a few organizations. Off the ag campus, I'm involved with um, I'm a member of the UK club volleyball team, as well as Alpha Lambda Delta Honor Society and um, the Deaf Culture and American Sign Language Club. Um, within the College of Ag, I'm also involved with Block and Bridal. I'm the newly elected vice president, as well as president of the Prevet Club and president of the CAFE Student Council. Wow, that's a bunch of groups. <laughs> That's very impressive. Um, I think my favorite organization that I was involved with in my time at UK was the Ag Econ. We've newly rebranded to the academic team. Um, we do quiz ball. Uh, it's like Jeopardy. So you just, you really get to nerd out. But I met some really great friends through that. And um, I think it's, it's a really great way for people to like take what they're learning in class and like it really solidify it in their in their minds, but in a fun, like competitive environment. Yeah, and you guys had quite a bit of success, isn't that correct? You won a couple of competitions there. Yeah, nice. Well, you know, kind of talking about that, similar to that, you know, has you both noted faculty, what have been some of your favorite classes? You know, what, like what's been the fun stuff you've gotten to do in the classroom? Um, two of my favorite classes it were definitely, I loved my Gen 100 class. I had Mitch Snyder as a professor and he was absolutely amazing. I loved all the trips that we got to go on and I felt like that class really got me involved at UK and made me aware of what all the college had to offer. Um, and then I also loved meat science with Dr. Renfro. Uh, I'm very much a hands-on person and that class, the entirety of it is hands-on. And even with the COVID restrictions and guidelines, he still made it um, very fun for everybody that was involved. And we still got to do a lot of stuff. So it was, it has to be one of my favorite classes that I've taken at UK. Yeah, that's awesome. And for anybody on the call that doesn't know the Meets Lab class, I mean, that's literally processing, you know, from raw to process what you would buy in the grocery store. So it's, it is a very cool, interesting thing that a lot of our students get to do. So Whitley, how about you? Um, I took Ag Law the spring of my freshman year and I really enjoyed that class. There's a lot of interaction and fun stories and you feel like I feel like I learned a lot of very practical information, like things that I could apply in my daily life. And then this semester, Dr. Barnett, I saw you on here. I really enjoyed Dr. Barnett's policy class. We got to talk about um, basically why government programs for ag are the way they are and, you know, how, how we can be effective leaders and makers of change in the policy arena to, to fit our goals. Yeah, that's awesome. So, you know, you guys obviously experience what we would consider regular semesters and regular years on campus, meaning that you were in the classroom, you know, with other students. It was, you know, an in-person learning experience. And then, you know, you both went through kind of this abrupt shift with COVID. You know, what were some of the challenges? I mean, I guess obviously other than, you know, being remote, were there things that you encountered that you didn't anticipate? And then was there anything that you felt kind of be, was a positive from this that you were able to, you know, learn from this experience? I 
I would say um, for me, I had one semester regular before last spring semester when it got cut short. Um, and I think the biggest negative that I've experienced from it is just, I guess I'm very much a hands-on person. So lacking that and what I loved about my animal science classes in the fall was that it was so hands-on and that's really how I learn. So sitting in front of a computer screen just isn't the same. Um, and beyond that, just it, you really have to reevaluate your time management skills because it's no longer, oh, you get to take notes in the classroom and whenever you come home, you just do homework. No longer, it's you spend your entire day in the apartment and you do to take your notes, you do your homework and it's very difficult to stay motivated and to just find the time to just accomplish everything that really needs done whenever you don't have that time specifically set aside to do it in a classroom. Um, one of the positive things is with that, with a lot of classes being asynchronous, it does give you a lot of leeway. I mean, for me, I, this past spring, I had a job with a beef cattle farm and we were working from seven o'clock in the morning till two, 3 p.m or some days even later, but then I got to come home and still work on my classes even after the day was over with the farm. So it does give you a lot of- Yeah, awesome. Whitley, how about you? I would agree. I think it was definitely a challenge at first to learn how to discipline yourself to get all of your schoolwork done. Uh, another thing that I thought was kind of hard was I went from being around a bunch of people my age all the time to being back home with my family um 100% of the time and so that's you know that's just an adjustment but I think that out of all of this um we've all learned how to adapt and kind of be more go with the flow I would say I'm a fairly type a person and this has forced me to kind of relax on some things I can appreciate that and, you know, Whitley, is you were kind of starting the job search in the middle of all of this and really, you know, kind of having to figure that piece out. Did this, I assume this did impact your job search. You know, how did that, how did it affect you? How did it, how have you dealt with that? Um, so it's kind of crazy how I ended up with the position that I'm going to start um, here soon. So for one of my marketing classes, I had to make a resume website. So I got that done and I put it on my LinkedIn. And um, a family friend slash like business acquaintance of, of my family um, saw it on there and he messaged my dad and was like, hey, like, my brother had her in class in high school. I've always heard good things about her. It's really cool that she put herself out there like that using this website. Like, do you think she would be interested in working with us? And so I went in and had a meeting with him. So I think like I'm very lucky and grateful to have had that opportunity. But um, yeah, I, I know a lot of people in my class who are like just scouring the internet looking for jobs. Mm -hmm. it's tough yeah absolutely this has been certainly a new frontier on on many levels for all of us but thankfully I think we're starting to see some light at the end of the tunnel and we're very excited to get back to more in-person activities this fall on campus and for things to look a little bit more I hate to use the word normal but that's the way they used to look I guess maybe is the way we should phrase it so you know, you guys obviously are, you know, Whitley, you've wrapped up your undergrad career, Sierra, you're towards the end of yours. What are you most proud of during your student tenure at UK? Um, that's kind of a hard one. Um, I don't know that there is one specific achievement that I would call out as being something that I'm the most proudest of. Um, more so, I'm just proud of who I've become from the college, and I've grown a lot in the three years that I've been 
here. And I'm very appreciative for that. I've gained so much more leadership experience and just different skills that will help me and have prepared me for the future. And I don't think that I could have attained those without coming to college. And I am very thankful for that. And I'm, it's great to look back and just see that growth that um, has occurred in just the past two years so far. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, um, I think that there were definitely some very challenging courses that I was required to take as, you know, pursuing my different majors. Um, and I think like just different projects that I've produced from those classes, I'm very proud of. I had to do a market analysis for like a business writing class in the Ag Econ department, and that was a lot of work. And I, I was very proud of, you know, it was something that I created. And I think just overall, my level of confidence and my abilities has really um, kind of increased as I went through school. I'm, I'm a little shy in general, but I think that UK has given me the, uh, the confidence to, to know that I'm good at the things that I want to be good at, that I want to push myself to, to figure out. Yeah, that's awesome. So, you know, I'm sure throughout when you look back on your college experience, when you think about everything, are there things you would change about it? Would you, is there anything you would do differently? Yeah, so looking back, like I just said, I'm kind of shy. And my first year, I didn't get out there a whole lot. I wasn't super involved. I think if I could go back, I would tell myself, you know, like just put your big girl pants on and get out there. Like they're good people. They're not gonna, they're gonna bite your head off. They want to be friends. They want to do things. And, and that's, so that is my one thing that I would change. Um, for me, I, I guess I would kind of say the same thing. Um, as far as meeting new people, I feel like I've met so many new people while I've been here, but there's just some experiences that at the time I was like, mm, maybe it's too much. Like maybe I shouldn't do that quite yet. And I kind of wish that I just would have jumped all in and gone for it because I mean, there's no time like the present. And if you don't take that opportunity, then you might not have it ever again. Right. I think that's probably been a thing. A lot of us have, as we've looked at this last year and, you know, sort of our COVID pandemic experience, that's probably reinforced that for quite a few of us. So, so, you know, when you think back and you think, you know, gosh, 20 years from now, I'm going to look back at my college experience at my time in Lexington. Is there a person or, a, you know, a class or someone, you know, from the college in particular that you'll remember that you'll think about and think about, gosh, this really, you know, made a big impact for me. Um, for me, there's two people that come straight to mind. Um, one of them is Anne Lee. She's my advisor, and I actually just finished up her swine production class. And she is just like a light in the room. Like, no matter what it is, she is just there to help you and make your day go easier and make your day a little bit brighter. And everyone just kind of, I mean, everyone benefits from it. And whenever I came to her with my idea of graduating in three years, she wasn't like, oh, I don't know, maybe don't do that. She was like, let's figure out how we can make this happen for you. And it was just someone that has pushed me this entire time to make me a better person and uh, push me to do better things and take the classes and do well in them. Um, and then the other person would be Dr. Erin. Um, she, She's just kind of a rock that anybody can lean on. And I've had her in class twice now. And I, she is also the block and bridal advisor. So I've worked with her very closely and anything that I need that I know I can just go to her and she will help me even though like maybe I'm not her student anymore. Like it doesn't matter. Like she will be there for you no matter what. Yeah, that's great. Whitley, how about you? Um, I would say my person like that is Susan Skeed. Um, she's the academic coordinator for the Ag Econ department. And anytime I need help, needed help with anything, scheduling classes, figuring things out, getting my commencement 
ready, like with registering on the website, like I'll, she's an email away and she replies just like that. And she, so she's awesome. Always ready to help. Yeah, that's fantastic. I'll admit, I'm not surprised to hear some of those names. I, I spend a lot of time with alumni, of course, and have heard those names over and over from alumni as well. So have, you know, been helping lots of students over the years. But so Sue Whitaker has submitted a great question for us. Sue's our past president of the Alumni Association. And she asked, what would you tell high school students as to why they should attend UK and in particular, why they might look at CAFE? So I think that the College of Ag is very unique in that there is the community that we were talking about earlier. There are great scholarship opportunities and there's a, like a wide array of majors. You can go the more traditional ag route with majors like mine, like ag econ or animal science, or even if you want to be pre-med or pre-dental, you can do dietetics and human nutrition or um, the biotechnology. I can't think of the exact term for it or you know if you want to do tourism or fashion that's also included in the college of ag i just i think it's a great great place to be um i would have to agree with whitley i mean anybody and everybody is always welcome in the college of ag and you can tell that as soon as you walk through the doors and as soon as you start your um, academic career there. Uh, beyond that, I would say that, I mean, there's like no downside to it. I mean, there's so many great people and you, it's, I, I mean, I can't speak for any of the other colleges on campus, but I feel like we have such a close knit community. And I was really worried when I came to such a large university that you like, I wouldn't have that. And I have found it and I love it so much. And there's just no better place to be on campus than Ag Campus. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So Dr. Barnett has submitted a question for us here and he asks about what you all did to satisfy our experiential learning requirement. And for any of those in the audience that don't know about this, the college several years ago added, um, all of our students have to have an experiential learning um, it, credit on before they can graduate. And so that can be internships, it can be study abroad. And obviously those were pretty limited this past year with COVID. So how did, you know, what did you guys do to satisfy that? And then how did that impact your future plans? So my actual credit came from the study abroad trip to Argentina that the College of uh, the Ag Econ Department takes. I didn't get to go because I was scheduled to go last spring break and it got canceled like two days before we were supposed to fly out. But I've also done a couple of internships throughout my time in college. Um, I worked at Nutrien one summer and that was cool. I got to see like the retail side of ag, the sales side, and, I, and that helped me realize like, hey, I don't think that I want to do this. I like it, but probably not for me. And I also worked with a research firm here in Lexington and just did some like different data stuff for them. And um, like I'm going into banking, so I'm not going to be using that directly, but I think that was a really great experience to just see like how things work um, and meet a lot of really intelligent people. Um, I am actually satisfying my credit this summer. Uh, I will be shadowing a vet. Um, my plan, I'm a pre-vet track, so I need the vet hours to apply to vet school. So I will be shadowing a veterinarian. Um, I have shadowed a veterinarian in the past, so I guess I can and speak to how it solidifies my future plans. Um, I, I've never really wanted to do anything else and shadowing a vet just, it brings it all to life and allows me to see this is what I wanna do. And I know from other students, speaking to other students that for some people, I mean, they do that and it turns into 
I don't know, like might not be for me. So I, it's very beneficial to have that opportunity to do that and to shadow or to study abroad just to, you know, see if this is something that you want to do for the rest of your life. Yeah, absolutely. I remember when that study abroad trip was canceled, there were a lot of very sad students. And then Sierra, are you shadowing a large animal or small animal vet? And do you know what, do you have a particular path you want to attack? Um, so I've shadowed a small animal veterinarian in the past. This summer I will be shadowing a large animal veterinarian. Um, currently my plan is mixed practice, more large animal, um, if I had to pick, it would definitely be a large animal veterinarian. Um, I've sort of kind of accrued an interest for wildlife veterinary medicine. Um, so I don't know how that will play in quite yet, but it's, it's on my radar. Yeah, absolutely. You'll get to see some crazy exotic things. So, um, so, you know, as you guys think about, you know, your transition from high school into college, was there anything that, you know, really surprised you that you felt like, gosh, nobody told me this, or I didn't know this was going to happen. Was there anything that caught you a little off guard? Um, for me, I come from a town of 1,000 people, so it was a very big culture shock coming to a university that has as many uh, students as my entire county has in population. So it, um, it was a very big culture shock and you meet so many people with so many different backgrounds. And I was talking to um, some of my friends and you just don't realize how diverse the world is until you meet new people and you listen to their experiences and you just realize there's so many things out there that you don't even know exist until you talk to people and learn and just listen to them. And it, um, it was very shocking coming from my small town to a place where I've met people from Chicago who grew up in the city. And it's, I talk to them about animals and they're like, what is that? <laughs> like, I grew up with that. Like, it's, it's just, very, very culturally diverse, which is not something that I grew up with. Yeah, I would have to agree with Sierra. I had a, a similar experience. And I also think, you know, the, the workload coming from high school to college, you have to learn more so how to manage your time. You have to learn how to study. It's, you know, it, it takes you a semester to kind of get everything figured out. Yeah. So kind of along those same lines, you know, is there any advice and this will be kind of our final question. If any of the audience has any more questions, feel free to throw those in the chat pod. Uh, but is there any advice you would give to, you know, we'll just a few short months, we'll welcome a whole brand new class onto campus. Anything you would share with them? Any words of wisdom? I would say uh, don't be afraid, get out there and get involved. And don't be afraid to reach out to your professors or friends in your classes to help you. Everybody there wants you to succeed. Nobody wants you to go home. <laughs> um, I would say take advantage of the opportunities that you were given during college. I mean, you will never have a time like this again in your life, a time where you can try something and decide that you don't like it. I mean, if you want to try it, now is the time. So don't be afraid to say yes. Don't be afraid to just go out and do it. I mean, it's, there are limited consequences while you're in college to try something and decide you don't like it. So take advantage of that. Take advantage of any opportunity that is given to you and just make the most of your time here because it does go by very quickly. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I think that is excellent advice and I appreciate both of you guys being on here with us and sharing your wisdom. And, you know, it's amazing how some things stay very much the same about college, you know, decade after decade, but there's also a whole lot that changes. And so 
I know, I think all of us, you know, that are alumni of UK and the college on the call appreciate kind of hearing about those changes and kind of the challenges that you guys face and how you overcome that. And, you know, certainly it's nice to hear that you both had such fantastic experiences. So again, we appreciate it. And thank you to all of our audience members for joining us this afternoon. Uh, we are recording this and it will be available on our website. We'll get it emailed out to everybody. So if there's somebody that you know wasn't able to make it, feel free, you can forward this along to them. And with that, everybody have a good afternoon.